guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting green to the finale of Healing Good Pretty Cure. I don't want to watch this. <laughs> I really don't because I I'm not ready to say goodbye, even though it is officially over as of today, and it hurts, and I had been dreading this all this week. And I was like, I'm not ready to say goodbye to these girls and say hello to my goat cast of, <laughs> of Tropical Rouge Pretty Cure. But at the same time, it is time to say farewell to these four amazing girls. But other than that, let's go ahead and get started with the final episode. And three, two, one, go. <sighs> I'm not gonna cry. I I'm not. No, no, but if I know myself like I know I do, I'm probably gonna cry. I'm ready to see these girls when they're older. <sighs> Is it weird that this feels like a filler episode to me? I mean, usually, because I gotta say this, like, mostly all Pretty Cure finales, like, to me, um, ever since I reacted to these, <laughs> these last few series, um, from 2016 up to now, like, in a way they felt, like, filler-esque, but also, you know, the introduction of the next series and stuff like that, but it's still good. It's going to be the last week here in this song. Oh my god. And then when you also think about it, this is the last week I'm using my intro and outro. Because mm -hmm. by next Saturday, I'm going to have a different intro and outro. Some of you might know what my intro is if you know me. And such but you'll just have to wait because I'm not technically I'm not unveiling it until Sunday so when Tropical Rouge comes out Saturday night and when it comes out Sunday morning yeah mm -hmm. so by by Sunday yeah by Sunday next Sunday Oh my god. <laughs> oh. No. It's pretty, ain't it? <laughs> I don't think we're going to see what's her face in this episode, but in the last maybe few moments, like when they're on their way home. Oh, it's so pretty. You know, Umi's there too. Y'all remember Umi, right? Like, oh my god. <laughs> it hasn't been that long. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh me. Four minutes in and I'm about to cry, oh my god! <laughs> Four minutes in and I'm about to cry. 
Japanese sweet. That's what you are, Rabbitine. I wish they would have gone to see them. Supply. Oh, I bet. <laughs> ah! Yep, yeah, please. We don't need y'all choking on yourselves. Oh my god, look at the bird! Ah! Oh, really? <laughs> oh. Oh, I bet she does. I feel like I'm in a Disney movie and I love it. So that will be our final villain of the week. Oh, but it's going to pop up today. Oh, Latte.
No. See, the one thing that I'm still kind of pissed off, especially with the other two, not, you know, Dado, you know, Kobayashi, <laughs> um, we didn't get to see what, like, what human that they were going to be born from. And so I remember a lot of us were, like, theorizing and saying that one of them was going to be Chiyu and the other one was going to be Hina, but no, like, really. Dado Yuzin was the only one. That's why the world is what it is now. And I think they're going to realize this, which they are. And something tells me that when they're older, the earth is going to look way more prettier. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Is it going to go in one of the buns? It's going to go in the bun. Never would have thought buns would have feelings, but hey. That's interesting. Because it was just one Mega Bugan. But. Oh. Because of the fact. Yeah. There's six buns. But. Uh, Omi. One last time. I'm gonna miss this. I'm gonna miss this a lot. Seeing cute animals in a puppy transforming cover. Like, oh my god. We're never gonna have anything like this again. But then we get to next week, and I'm gonna be like, you see how pretty this transformation is? This is currently my favorite transformation for this series. And then next thing you know. <sighs> ah!
Why couldn't they make plushies of all these cute animals? Oh my god, I want them. Hmm. Seriously? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like if you got a dozen eggs and shit like that. Umi, now is in the time. It's okay, it was an accident. No, oh, what? Oh. Latte, you turn into a pretty cure too for one episode? All I hear, because this is her VA, it's my chank. Oh my God, that's a baby. Oh, poor Summer. Damn. <laughs> nah, you know what? Give her a dumbbell and she'll be up and out. Excuse me. Huh? He's sleepy head. Huh? 
Uh, and there she goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. So we're not even going to see them when they older? No? Yes? No? No? Are you serious? Excuse me? Time out. Time out. Total animation. Excuse me? Nani? Like, what, what? No. No. We're supposed to see them when they're older now. And it, they're supposed to meet up one more time. But you know what? Okay. Final thoughts on this last episode. And then we'll go more in detail after the preview. I loved it. I loved everything about it. Seeing them, you know, transform one more time. Using their power up one more time. How seeing Cure Summer and about to go into that goaded cast. Just uh, makes me so happy. And I love this season a lot. I think... It's in my top three for the for the ones that I've reacted to, and then I think for the ones that I not uh, didn't react to before, I think it still would be in my top three because it's so good, and I loved it. I loved the characters, the story. Even though yeah, we had to wait, you know, a while because you know COVID. COVID was the biggest enemy for this show, which sucks because the fact is they went from 48 episodes to 45 episodes but something tells me that the the two three three episodes So now I want to know what the ring is for. I mean, are we just the connection between these two? I mean, is she going to have it in the first episode, though? Like, look at me, baby. Oh, the music. The music. Look at me. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't. Oh god, this hurts so much. Okay, so continuing on what I said before, you know, the last bit. 
this was a really good episode. Just loved everything about it. This story, personally, everything was really good. I, I think my one little nitpick is not getting to see, you know, Hinata, Chiyu, and Nadoka older. Because almost every Pretty Hair series, what they've done is we've seen them at the ages that they are. And then by the time we finish the show, they're adults and such. I think my current, my personal fave for, like series of how they did their adults is between the end of Star Twinkle, um, Kitty Kitty and Gold Princess, especially Gold Princess. Even though we didn't really get to see like the other three girls um faces except what's her face who was the main girl who was um for Gold Princess, it was still pretty and I love it and you know, oof like the feels. But I, I mean I hate the fact this is over. I didn't want this to be over. And it feels like it went by so quickly, despite the fact of what happened with this show. Um, so let's talk about characters and how I feel about them from first episode up to last episode. So we're going to go backwards and we're going to start with... <laughs> Should I start with my best girl? Come here, Cody. Oh, there you are. Um, come here. Okay, no, then you go sit on the side. Let's go ahead and start with my best girl. Okay, Miss Umi, played by Umi from Love Live, of course, because I don't really remember her actual name. I, you know, at first, I think episode one, I was a little hesitant of her because I, I kind of assumed that I thought she was going to be like the bitchy one of the group where, you know, she, because she is one of those types of pretty characters where it's like, she knows everything and you've seen it in past shows like freaking Toa from, um, Girl Princess was kind of like that until the girls told her like, you need to be like this instead of being more hard and mean and cold and such and be, you know, princess like and towards the end of the series she became princess like my freaking best girl looked like a dang busy princess when you first see her and she comes and I'm like ah yes like, you're so pretty like yes thank you um honestly like I love her so much and I will always love her she's just so uh the transformation like at first you know because Nautica was one of my personal favorite transformations from Procure Grace but then you know Umi slash Kareth came in and was like, hey, I'm transforming with a dog. Like, how awesome is that? And I'm just like, <laughs> puppy. It's puppy. And I, I love her so much. I, She gives me, like, a lot of feels towards some of the other characters that I've seen in so many different animes because she's kind of like a Mary Sue type character because she's from a different time and such she doesn't understand certain things that you know are modernized for the rest of us so i loved seeing her like you know learn something new every single week and such i mean i would have loved to seen her during the halloween episode the christmas episode and the new year's episode but because the fact is they cut those three episodes we may never see those but as i said i feel like they're going to put those on the blu-ray disc um specifically for so the kids can watch it themselves um, but yeah, loved her so much. All right, let's go and talk about Miss Hinata. Okay, so at first, I just like what Umi, um, well, no, Hinata I loved. Hinata was, uh, before Umi and before, like, I kind of said Nautica was kind of my best girl, Hinata was kind of my best girl. And normally, I don't always go for, um, the yellow cures. It depends, like, the last yellow cure. I really truly loved was freaking Kirara aka Cure Twinkle from Go Princess Pretty Cure and sometimes like I still love you know Cure Cust Custard because that's my baby girl and I protect her no matter what but when it's someone that you're like trying to see if you can relate to of course because she is a girly girl and I'm a girly girl myself she kind of gives me you know the Gauru vibes without being too too deep into the Gauru vibe because she's someone who really likes fashion so something told me that like maybe her end career will be something into fashion and I wish we could have gotten a little more into that with her because she loves shopping and everything so much um I think the one episode that made me dislike her for like a couple of weeks was the last episode that aired before the show got you know delayed because of COVID because the fact is she was so afraid of transforming into a pretty hero again because of um 
what was currently happening, and especially that was when freaking Akechi, you know, the rat came in and such. But I was like, as much as I'm like slowly disliking her and not agreeing with the things that she says, I understand of why um, she felt the way she did. And then when the show finally returned and we continued from that episode, I was like, yeah, I sympathize with you. So having that like, so many months we were um without this show and me re-watching the episodes again leading up to before the COVID episode and before it got delayed and everything um I felt bad for her I love her dearly I, I love her just jokes I love the fact that you know for a couple episodes before this finale she got to be a leader because in my opinion out of the four she doesn't get the most development and the most screen time everybody you think everyone gets an equal amount you know especially when it is the three of them at first but when it goes to the four of them or the five of them or even for god heaven bids sticks pretty curious it is a little harder to give everybody that screen time and even with just four girls i feel like she got the least amount of screen time due to chiyu nadoka and umi because i'm like damn like everyone else is getting a main focus she to me i feel like she also got the bare minimum on focus episodes and leading into the last few weeks going up into this finale that's when she started getting the most and how she was like okay let me try to be a leader and be better and this is that and the third and so i'm really proud of what she did and how she did it yeah there were some things that i didn't agree with and such but she's still a good character and i think a lot of people who really love her love her even more now for what she's done as a character and who have you know warm their hearts and like say said to themselves like if she can do this i can do this too and so yeah going next to <laughs> our you know <laughs> to you <laughs> to you to you to you what can i say about to you i you know instantly with you i automatically loved her um hold on one second my dog wants me you want to come in the video puppy and be in the final episode for pretty cure all right you go on my bed go that way there you go. Okay. Chiyu, I instantly also love because you know also paying a ton and you know how <laughs> when, when Crunchyroll got the rights to Pretty Cure, everybody was saying how adorable paying a ton was and how he needs to be protected and everything. So, of course, yeah, even myself was thinking that when we started this show. Um, at first, I thought Chi was going to be very similar to Cure Mermaid from Go Princess Pretty Cure, especially possibly like career wise because we didn't know what she was going to be as well but she gives me feels to um the blue cure from Hagato. yes her my other best girl I mean, there's so many because i've been watching pretty cure for such a long time i don't remember everybody's names ish um I do like the fact that, you know, hers was different because I, typically when you think of a blue cure, you're thinking that they're going to go into medicine, possibly be a rock star, something um, veterinary or whatever. But she's different because of the fact that she was doing something in sports. And so something tells me that if we would have got to see them older, we would have essentially seen her, you know, at the Olympics. That was like the biggest goal for me going into this show, like because when we found out that she was a um an athlete I was like oh snap like we might see a future episode where she's at the Olympics and everything and I would have loved to seen it but of course because of time crunch and you know how how long it takes to do a series because typically sometimes something tells me that like by the time that we normally get to October and we get to uh the point where we're very close to the previous the current series airing and being done um that is of course you know when the leaks of the next show comes out and stuff but usually between october to december to new year that is when we get it and such and so i was like okay i really just want this for chiyu and chiyu you know she she made me laugh chiyu is very similar to uh yukiko as i said so many times you know because of the fact is her and yukiko both live in an inn and of course they were going to take over the inn even though with chiyu the difference is she wanted to be an athlete and then take care of the end instead of like, let me take care of the end first and follow my parents, my, not my parents, my family footsteps and then do something that I really want. She kind of switched it and I like that a lot about her. Um, another thing is these two, Yukiko and Chiyu, the puns 
anything punzy that somebody would make, they would be the only ones laughing the most, and then everyone else is looking at them like, what the heck is wrong with you, chick? Like, oh my god, like, that wasn't even funny, but then it'd be me and her laughing, but like, yeah, that was, that was hella funny, like, oh my god. Um, but yeah, she always made me smile every single week. I, I loved her passion and determination and what she wanted to do for her life and everything. It just makes me feel like that much happier, like for me to like be hella determined in what I want to do for the rest of my life as a career between, um, YouTube and then me also having a dream of wanting to be on TV one day as a correspondent for uh, Celebrity News because I love the crap out of Celebrity News and shit like that because, you know, that's my bread and butter. <laughs> and I'm really good at that. And, yeah, I have a really pretty face for a camera because your girl originally wanted to be an actress. And in a way, I still could, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I loved you no matter what. And she was just... Fun. They were all fun. And finally, <laughs> our main lead, Miss Nadoka, our freaking best, like, our Madoka, our Saga Tanya the Evil, um, our freaking Futaba from Persona 5, our Wakaba from I'm a, So I'm a Spider, So What, Aoyuki. All I can say. The year of Aoyuki is over. Even though, like, yeah, we got So I'm a Spider, So What continuing for another uh, cure. Um, but it still feels over. And I'm saddened because it was so awesome to not only watch this at the same time, but also Sympho Gear at the same time. Um, and then anything else she was in, uh, freaking Isekai Quartet. So to have, like, three shows at once where she's voicing like three different characters was like really cool and I was just like oh like oh my god because you go from you know being like a really like evil you know lolly girl to being like this cute little girl and like yeah I'm a pretty care to you know this badass chick who is also like talking to freaking Nana Mizuki and I'm like oh my god like <laughs> like I can't like my pretty cares are talking together and they're fangirling except in the Sinfo Gear series, she's more badass and stuff. Not to say that she's not badass in this show, because she's equally and such. But I really, I think, related to a lot in Nadoka because of the fact is when that first episode, because it's funny enough, because when see, when the season started, I was officially living here and such. And um, seeing her say that she was sick and everything, and I was like, oh my god, this is literally me in a nutshell of when I was a kid growing up really a baby growing into a toddler into a child I was very sick and such and to have those memories like come up even though I barely remember it and stuff and just, just start crying out of nowhere and saying like oh my god like there is another character in this series that I can relate to and to problems and everything and that's the best thing about this show that any one of us can find a character in this series to relate to so much. There were so many people that were able to relate to Kyrsele and to Star when Star Twinkle Pretty Gear came out so so much to finally have someone a person of color um and two nationalities in the show was like a really good thing for Pretty Gear and so I hope going into the future after um tropical ruse we're able to see something you know um something else i mean the milestone also was you know with hugato and having a guy you know in a ball gown and saying you know it's okay for guys to wear dresses and stuff like that these are milestones that i'm glad that this show is taking because it is the new norm and you have to continue with it you could you can if you want to i've seen other shows in the past where situations have happened and it's like should we downgrade our show or should we upgrade our show because like one of my personal favorite shows that i can watch over and over again aka gossip girl um around the time this was like 2006 or 2008 it was the time where uh, not the great depression but it was somewhat like the great depression in my opinion um where the 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 writers the the cat the not the cast the crew the people who write the the storylines for the shows um wanted to be paid more and so 
it declined. Like, a lot of shows got really messed up for it. Gossip Girl was one of them, Heroes was one of them, and so many others. And a lot of people think that um, what Gossip Girl should have did from season two onwards is that they should have showed these characters possibly in poverty and this like that. But they decided to show it as, like, um, not the American dream or a fan, like a fantasy. There we go. Um, essentially, like, oh, hey, if you do this, and da, 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 even though there was a lot of complications in Gossip Girl. Like, still, so, if you haven't seen Gossip Girl, I would say really go go watch that show. It's so good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, yeah. But, I mean... <laughs> Nadoka it was just this cute, adorable child who I loved so freaking much ever since episode one. And even though at first she went from best girl for me to second best girl for me because, you know, Umi, I I'm just, I'm really happy that Aoyuki was cast in this. Aoyuki was, before Umi's VA came in, Aoyuki was the only girl, um, voice actor who I knew. I barely knew Hina's, B Hinata's. Um, all I know is that she is in one of the Idol Master games and that's Shiny Colors. I don't remember the character that she plays and I was like, oh, congratulations. I was like, nice. I don't know anything much about Chiyu's, but, uh, I know recently, like, Latte's VA is in the new We Cross series that I ended up dropping after a couple of weeks because I didn't like it, but, um, her, her VA in that is really, really good. But yeah, I mean, I loved it. It was a really good show. I hate the fact that it's over and stuff but the best thing about it is anytime if I want to I can rewatch it and relive those memories all over again and seeing the transformations but you know now we're going on to like I said the most goaded the most anticipated slash goaded series for pretty care this will probably maybe even be and I cannot believe that I'm going to say this because we, we don't know how it's going to be a year from now, but I'm going to go ahead and predict this. I think Tropical Rouge Pretty Care might end up being my number, my new number one. Honestly, I really think it because it's using the one thing that I've been wanting this show to do for the longest time, and that is mermaids and such. Your girl is someone who loves mermaid melodies so, so, so much. And the fact that we are finally, freaking finally, getting something to do with mermaids and because I love anything mermaid things, it's gonna be good. I, I literally cannot wait to see these characters. I cannot wait to hear the, the goat cast, like, say everything I, I just this cast is gonna be amazing I just I know it is I can feel that it's gonna be amazing like do you not know who is in this show like please I mean having Ali Yuki in this that was a goat right there not a Mizuki yes that's a goat too but this cast we got a whole freaking cast including the freaking mermaid the mermaid okay like let's go this like freaking um Kira Summer her biggest role besides Pretty Kira is freaking um how heavy are the dumbbells um Freaking Mikasa! Mikasa from Attack on Titan! Violet Evergarden! She's in this show, and I have been wanting this for the longest time, and the fact that it's finally true, like, uh, I can't, and it's just so much. Freaking, um, Mai from Bunny Girl Senpai, and freaking, uh, slash Nobara from Jujutsu Kaisen, and, um, Raptalia from freaking Shield Hero, like, what the heck? Kirby! Freaking Kirby! Slash, oh my god. <laughs> my child from freaking Magical Girl Rising Project is in this show. And I never would have thought because I was like, oh my god. Like when I listened to her voice one day, I was like, I feel like your voice is also familiar. I know you're Kirby. And then I found out she was the first girl from Magical Girl Rising Project to go. And I was like, oh my god. She's finally going to get a full series where she's a full freaking magical girl. Like, yes. I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Um, am I forgetting anybody? No. Hold on. Summer. Yeah, I got all of them. Okay, but the mermaid. The mermaid. The mermaid. That is freaking Silica from Sora Online. So do you see how this cast is freaking goaded? So the biggest thing is we just need the story. You can have a goat as fuck cast, but that story is going to be the biggest thing. That's going to be the deal breaker, really, for me. 
and it's gonna be so weird to look at this a year from now and to see how good or how somewhat this story is gonna be for this show but honestly I'm so freaking excited I'm gonna try to get this out for you tonight but it's like 9 52 almost 10 o'clock and it's gonna take about an hour to edit this but yeah other than that guys that is my reaction and review towards <laughs> healing good pretty cure if you guys enjoyed it please give me a like it really helps me out also subscribe to my channel i make videos every single day join the natural spot and of course i will see you guys officially y'all next saturday or next sunday since we don't know if crunchyroll is going to get the rights of tropical rouge if um if the episode doesn't get out until like one probably it's not going to come out till like one two probably three o'clock in the morning um, you'll probably see it on Sunday night. If not, if it comes out earlier, I will try to get it out by Saturday night. I don't know. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.